All right, guys, so we went to the creek. We didn't have the exact day that we thought we were gonna have. I really thought I was gonna be able to go out there and maybe catch a small mouth, but it didn't happen. So we are back in our fishing sauna. We have our fan going, and we're gonna do a little bit of tackle organization like I said I was gonna do in the video before. Last video, I kind of set up this room. Sorry to everybody that called me out on not putting my pictures up straight. Not making any excuses, but it was hot in here. When seeing straight, just wanted to put them up. And they're probably gonna stay like that, because I'm not sure, I'm not gonna be here for that long probably so we're gonna we're gonna let them chill out like that for right now we have our stuff on the wall all this stuff is pretty much organized for the most part everything over here i mean we just did all that so that's organized as it gets but what's not organized is the stuff that i take to ponds with me every day that i keep in my crate so this is almost going to be kind of like a what's in my tackle bag video also with like organizing what's in my tackle bag i kind of go through tell y'all what i take why i take it i did one of these videos earlier in the summer but i go out and take this crate with me every day so a lot of times stuff just kind of gets thrown back into the wrong box wrong place you take something out of the box you don't have the box that it's supposed to go in you just throw it in another box and it never makes it back to the box it's supposed to go in you know everybody has Problem. That's what we're gonna do a little bit of today. Everything else is pretty much organized for the most part, so I just have to do the stuff in this crate, and I figured why not show y'all. Seems like y'all like seeing the little tackle stuff every now and then. So we're gonna do this, and I think that's pretty much all we have to do today. We're gonna try to go out and maybe catch a couple big mouth bass later. All right, guys, so check this out. This is my crate. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> all right, so this is my crate that I take from pond to pond. I had some rod holders on it, and I guess from taking it in and out of my kayak, bumping it around in my kayak, they fell off probably from falling in the back seat of my truck. So I need to probably put those back on there, but I kinda wanna find a better way to do it rather than just drilling holes because when I put it on there, I just drilled them in and there wasn't like a nut or anything to put on the back side of it. So I figured they'd fall out over time, especially with it being hot. The plastic probably like expanded. I'm rod holder list on my crate now. I have three rod holders on the kayak, which is pretty good. Most kayaks have two. Either I need to upgrade my crate or I need to figure out a better system for putting the rod holders on it, which that shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. We're gonna take some of this stuff out, put it where it's supposed to go, and also show y'all, take y'all on a tour of my tackle bag box crate. Here we go. So yeah, that can be fixed. This is my miscellaneous box that I forget that I put lures in, and this is the box that they always end up being in whenever I look in the box, and it's too late. This was my top water box, chatterbait, skirted bait, lipless, and fusion hook, packet, Zaxby's wrapper, Walmart receipt for water guns, and the net bait. I guess I'll just explain to y'all why I carry a crate instead of a backpack. Normally I do throw my backpack in the back of the truck just in case I want to throw some boxes out of the crate into the backpack and walk around the pond. But I like carrying this crate because one, I can keep more tackle in the crate than I can in a bag. Two, the crate keeps the tackle out of the floor. So like everything that I take with me fits in this crate. So like when I get up in the morning, I just grab this crate, throw it in the truck. Also this crate has this fancy little yak gear thigh bag on the side. So I keep like these fish clamps just in case I catch one with teeth on it in there. And I also keep pliers and scissors on the side of this which that might not be the best idea because these scissors eventually are probably going to cut through this but for right now this crate was like maybe five bucks i know with the milk crate challenge going on that's okay we need to address that actually where are all these milk crates coming up because when i was trying to find a free milk crate i couldn't find one i had to go buy one so i'm jealous of all these people doing the milk crate challenge have 25 milk crates stacked on top of each other and i'm struggling to find one that's not a bad idea that's a good video idea loser has to do the milk crate challenge 1500 likes on this video and you'll get a larry Nelson jr milk crate challenge I promise if i can find 15 or 20 however many that take if y'all have any milk crate videos or any videos of y'all doing the milk crate challenge, please send them to me because I think they're the funniest thing. All right, so we have a lot of boxes here. This is the terminal box. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take out stuff that doesn't belong in the box it's in and just kind of sit it out to the side. So we have a jig in here. Um, my terminal box is what you think it is. It's just terminal tackle. So that's normally not jigs it's like hooks weights and my problem with this box is it did really fine in the beginning like in the beginning it did it did excellent like nothing was transferring over everything was staying in the spot but now everything is just all mixed together in a way and i don't know how i feel about that but hopefully all boxes have this problem of where the lures or whatever that you keep in one section mix with other ones and then so like if you have a whole bunch of three aught hooks and then your three aughts mix with your four aughts and then you have a bait that a four aughts too big and a three aught fits perfect in your three aughts or in your four aught section and then you're like oh what do I do now? That and I'm not sure if I got some water in this box or what but a couple of these hooks have a little bit of rust on them and that also bothers me. 
But I think that might be more my doing um, rather than like the box's fault. With me probably just putting a rusty hook in here. And also I wish there was a better way to organize hooks because I hate like having to jiggle hooks out of boxes. I like to be quick and efficient. So I'm probably gonna try to organize these hooks in this box to the best of my ability. All right, cool, that box is done. Terminal box is clean. Um, next box, this is my hard plastic top order box. Um, I have some poppers that are up on the wall that I actually need to put in this box. The thing is, I know I have like some black choppos and stuff laying around that I want to put in here. But it's just more of a matter of finding them. All right, got my chapo and my popper. These three colors are the chapo that I have, the black, bone, and white, only three colors you need. They also make a really cool bullfrog patterned one, but it's kind of like this popper, but in a chapo full size. Only three baits you'll ever need. Yep, I need, I might need this one too. So the next box that, well, let me, I had one for skirted baits, and I think I might have misplaced it. Hard baits, lipless stuff like that. This is my miscellaneous box, and I know I had one for chatty baits, but I don't, oh, right here. Skirted bait box, so like chatty baits, jigs, all go in here. And not these crank baits. But I know I have a whole bunch of different chatterbaits that are like spread out between these boxes. This box right here, at one point, this kind of became my like go-to box. I had everything in here that I fish, frick sides, chatterbaits. And I had a couple like Texas rig hooks and stuff like that in this box. So that's why this one has all this other stuff in it. Like this was the box that would stay on the deck of the kayak or in between my legs in the kayak. Because I'm pretty sure I said this in the video, I also had a lot of baits over there on that wall that I want to put in boxes. Just because they really don't have a place over there on the wall, they were just kind of up for display. And I'll be out and I want to throw them and they don't do any good here. They don't do me any good hanging up on the wall, so. Jigs, chatterbaits. Got it, got all the colors I need, black and blue, and jigs, green pumpkin, small and big, white chatterbait, chartreuse chatterbait, green pumpkin chatterbaits, black and blue chatterbaits. I need to get red. They had red on sale. I think it's at Dick's they're on sale. Hopefully I can go buy some before y'all go scoop them all up. Y'all go buy some red chatterbaits. Buy your boy some, ship them to me. This box right here was like my miscellaneous box. So everything that I thought I wanted to take with me, but I just didn't know where to put it at, went in this box. So actually there's probably a lot of stuff in this box that like really I don't even need. I'll never pick it up. Like these crankbaits, these are old and rusted. I don't even know why those are in there. I've had some good days with these little cheap $2.99 crankbaits. Like these jawbone crankbaits have caught me a lot of fish at some point.
All right, guys, we have the tackle crate. I was about to say bag. It's not a bag, a crate. We have our tackle crate organized. I'm going to go through and show y'all what we have. Or it's really, it's pretty much the same as it's always been. It's just now everything's in the right spot. So it's fresh and clean now. So we have our chatterbait jigs in this box. In this one, we have our miscellaneous stuff like extra frogs, crankbaits, poppers, stuff that I probably won't ever, stuff that I won't use like maybe once a month, but it's nice to have it whenever you do want it. Terminal tackle, we have all of our stuff back in the right location, we think. That'll probably stay like that for about three or four days. Then we have all of our top water stuff, top water hard baits, and a couple frogs. We have our liquid stuff, swim baits, war pigs, stuff of that nature, and Last but not least, we have jerk baits, frit sides, and crank baits. So, guys, that's pretty much it. We're gonna try to actually make it to a pond. What time is it? 5:28. So, hopefully, we can go catch some fish out of a pond here in a couple minutes. So, we're gonna go try to do that, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that y'all like the tackle organization stuff. I promise we're gonna go back to that creek and we're gonna catch some smallmouth. I need to go to Walmart pick up some like underspins or some rooster tails, whatever you like to call them. I always fish Ned rigs in that creek, but I think maybe like a rooster tail, something, I think a moving bait could do pretty good in that creek. So I wanna go try that out. 5.30 now, we have like three or four hours to fish. So hopefully we can go get on some fish at this creek. So wish us luck, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe because if you're watching this, you're probably not subscribed or you might be, but you might not be at the same time. So subscribe if you're not. I appreciate all the support. Thank y'all so much for all the support on the videos. Don't forget to fish them hard. Don't forget to fish them hard. <laughs> and have a good day. See y'all.